<laughs> well, <laughs> Duh. we're screwed. The other ones Let's aren't too see, far yeah. away, though, right? Well, we li listen. This is north, mm -hmm. so we want something. We want a hill that looks like this, right? Okay, that's facing north. It's facing north, so we want something on that side. That is that hill is facing west, right? Go on the south, other side of it, west. and then it becomes facing north. Yeah, if we can get over that ridge, I guess. No, but there's nothing over there. Is it dry on the map, kind of? If you look, I don't know how to. How, what is this? How do how do you use technology? I forgot. See, okay, this. So we're looking at there. Now. That will move with you. Okay, there we go. And Nathan's always like every week, and he's like finding something to do, aren't you? Because like, you day, sit down and computer program, you got to go have a balance. I try to exercise, but I need caffeine to exercise. And it's, but if I intermittent fast and I eat clean for like two days, then I stop needing caffeine to exercise. Caffeine is an evil loop. Maybe a cardio miracle will be a miracle. It's an evil loop, man. You get stuck in the loop of caffeine. Luckily, I've never even had a soft drink. My, I mean, cold You've drink. My, my whole cold drink my whole life. What? You've never had a caffeinated beverage your whole life. Nope. <laughs> what? Never. Rex. No. Nope. That is beautiful, man. I just grew up that way. I thought, well, I might as well keep the streak going. That's like a beaver. Yeah, beaver. No on pine trees. Huh. They were always quaking. Got a it's mouthful definitely of pine gum there. Yeah, that's hey, sappy. Yeah, the big one. I didn't notice that. Yeah, this lake might have been like formed it's by like a, a bog. Beaver dam. Beaver dam or beaver dam to the left. Beaver dam. Beaver dam. Beaver dam. Yeah, you need to do is replace one bike for another. Yeah, like, well, that's what I'm telling you. I need I need a monkey bar. I need a monkey bar to hold grab onto first. You grab onto the monkey bar first before you let go of the last one. So take a get monkey bar to stuff in. Start replacing. Like you should make like chocolate maca smoothies or something. I don't. I I kind of feel like maca is a big scam. I, I have to be honest. That that gets. That gets my heart rate going. It gets my prostate going. <laughs> That's a pee 16 times. Take a combination of <laughs> ashwagandha, marrow root, tribulus trestis, uh, ginseng, tribulus all that trestis stuff together. Like, you'll be like bouncing off the walls. <laughs> and actually, I do take a lot of this. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Okay. Marrow root, Russian and Chinese uh, Olympic athletes would use. <laughs> anyway. Tribulus trust is just. I don't use that one anymore. I don't use that one anymore. You can't it's straight out of Harry Potter. Oh. Tribulus trust is. Boom! Satan appears. It's <laughs> a brown powder. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> I guess it does sound like. What? Tribulations on Earth, terrestrial. Anyway. All right. We're just wandering, right? Okay, we're just wander. Yeah, unfortunately there's not as much tree breaks and things as he wants us to follow, I guess. At least it's my... What's up for this? The, the rivers... It's really interesting to see an undisturbed, like, creek or river. Yeah. Totally undisturbed by humans or anything. And it's just a, a slot straight down in the ground that is overgrown, you know? Yeah. Kind of an ankle breaker. There's one definitely back there, filled with water. We got these satellite images in 2017. 
it's a weird story that this guy uh, called him. He's filming me. <laughs> okay. Is it okay? Well, Terry, if you see this, I'm probably butchering your story, but um, there was this guy from the Philippines that contacted Terry and was like, hey, I, I work for a satellite company and uh, I, I can help you. We have this technology that lets us look for voids underground using satellites. If you, you know, maybe I can help you find some treasure. Why don't you give me some sites and I'll check them out and we'll see if we can find anything in the ground. <laughs> and Terry just thought it was, you know, some guy trying to get secret treasure or something from him. Yeah, from the Philippines, yeah. Yeah, so he didn't really believe him that Brandon Fugel had just purchased him off the ranch and Terry was somewhat involved uh, in some of the, invest the early investigations there. And so he said, okay, um, why don't you look at this place called Skinwalker Ranch? And he had the permission of Brandon Fugel, from what I understand, to do this. Um, and so the, the satellites looked at the image and initially what what they got back, the guy wrote back, he's like, this is really weird. There's this giant, like, rectangular thing. Rectangular? That's, like, like not natural. Property. Yeah, it's like... <clears throat> it's like oh, hovering, above the property? It's hovering above the property, blo blocking our view. <laughs> and and then, so, and then he, he tried it again. And he said, I tried it a second time, and the thing was gone. But that was really weird that it was there, and it wasn't an underground thing. It was above the ground thing. That's kind of matches with what they've found out. There's this anom anomaly up there that yeah, skews yeah. lasers and all sorts of things. But, but this, this next time when he looked down, he, he found uh, there were a few square, triangular, geometric voids in the ground. And some of them were pretty big. Huh. And, uh, and so Terry's kind of theory is that I guess there's some legend about... Uh, an ancient record vault yep. that was there, um, and uh, that could that could have been on the property. And and uh, there was there's another story that Terry had been told about the Buffalo Soldiers because they were stationed during the Civil War, like right at Skinwalker Ridge, or right in the. Oh really? Area. Huh. Interesting and, places. And yeah. there's some accounts that they have of the Ute Indians paying them in gold bars to do something. And his theory is <laughs> that they hired these soldiers to move this, like, cache of records and treasure from, from Skinwalker Ranch up to Dry Fork Canyon. I think it was Dry Fork. <laughs> and they would deposit them there, which is on reservation land, and so it's more safe. That makes sense, actually. <laughs> and, they, and they told the Buffalo soldiers... If you ever come back here looking for this stuff, we'll kill you. <laughs> you will not return alive. I knew and, it. I knew it. <laughs> and there were two or three of them that did come back, and all of them were murdered. <laughs> and, uh, and and so that was that was Terry's theory. I'm going to add on to that, and this gets into a little bit of Mormon weirdness. But what if there was like an ancient let's let's say it's like an ancient Nephite or Jaredite vault or something there filled with records. What if there was like an ancient curse put on the land? Because yeah. through the priesthood you can give blessings and cursings. What if there was a curse yep. there? That's the flip side, I guess. Yeah. And, and it's <laughs> we don't a, it's talk a, about that part much. But yeah, <laughs> we don't, but it's a thing. And so if it is a thing, let's just say this treasure was cursed. And then the Buffalo Soldiers come in. Um, and they have somebody who maybe doesn't have the authority to remove the curse, but they still get in somehow and remove all the treasure, but the curse is still tied to the land. Hmm. Maybe all the weird stuff on Skinwalker Ranch is caused by this curse that was placed there to guard this treasure. Now there's nothing to guard, so it's kind of just running amok. And to us it looks weird, but it's hmm. like a confused curse that's still like upon the land. Moroni is the one that cursed it too. Pretty spooky, huh? It was Moroni. Ooh, that would be cool if it was. Yeah, I remember, yeah, on the Jaredite account specifically, Welcome there's Sunday lots school. of things yeah. like yeah. There, there was a curse upon the land and snakes were everywhere and, and uh, yeah, it's stuff like that. Uh, and there's a scripture where we'll say, you know, if you're a missionary, then you can 
at the end of the day, you can take your shoes off and wash your feet and curse your enemies that you that take your feet off against them. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody does that. Although I did have one missionary companion that he was kind of eccentric, and he actually did that. He was I caught him one day. He's like, "What are you What are you doing? I'm washing my feet from the sins." Anyway, I'm cursing. <laughs> He was from Lethbridge, Canada, of course. Sorry, Canadians. Anyway, don't film me. But, uh, yeah. My theory is not nearly as interesting. Okay, great. That's a great, pretty ironclad theory, don't yeah. you think? All of these theories are fast. It hits all, it check marks all the boxes of high strangeness and can't Here's the prove. the first time I've ever tried seaweed, okay? Oh, what? It's good stuff. Oh, you're munching, uh. It's teriyaki flavored. Oh, is it salty flavor? Omega well, that was or twos or I don't know. I don't know. than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Tastes great, actually. My theory, at least explaining the, maybe tagging on to what you're saying, it seems like there's an energy there. Maybe it's from a curse or something. <clears throat> and this energy source, whatever it is, if there is one, it attracts a lot of entities. Like, for instance, you know, Maybe deceased people, maybe good, you know, Indians from past life, uh, even demons, extraterrestrial life, interdimensional beings, all can make use of this energy source and or attracts them in a way or another. And it's kind of like a watering hole, like in the Sahara, you know, just everything, every animal's there, and it's kind of just they're all behaving well enough to at least drink the, the drink the water. Talking about the earth? I'm talking about Skinwalker Ranch. It's like, Okay. It's like it's a, to me. It's like a watering hole in the in the, the Sahara Desert because there's an energy source. Take the water's energy source, and all these ener entities, good and evil, and you know, good, bad, and ugly, are all there. And, but I don't know. You know, that's I don't know what's why there be an energy source if it's a curse or even if you know that's just another wild theory among I'm sure many. No. <laughs> that, that's a new one that people probably haven't heard before. <laughs> no, you're wrong. It was, it's curses. I know. Well, no, no, but I'm saying the curse could be what's bringing the energy. It just said, oh, okay. and then like, and this it's it's attracting this negative energy is attracting like additional things that want to continue to hang around and like say an alien needs to recharge or something, it goes to Skinwalker Ranch to recharge from another dimension. And same for the demons. What's <laughs> interesting is because I went to Blind Frog Ranch on, yeah. a, on one of those stupid floors and. The, our tour guide, Cactus Jack was his name, he's really cool. Huh. He, uh, he told us that, that Wayne, the guy that owns the place, and you can say what you want about him, but this is what he told me, that there, there's like a, I guess they've had like psychics and stuff on the, on the property, I don't know how true all this is. Mediums. But, uh, there's supposedly an energy portal that's hmm. like spewing out energy. There's they were, the way he was explaining it, yeah, something like that. Cause... There's different kinds of portals. There's like portals that physical things can go in and out of, and then there's portals that only energy can go in and out of. Okay. But there's hold on, I don't want to do that. But but most portals, they're not like two ways. You can only go in one and out another. Hmm. And there's an energy portal that's spewing out energy right on the property, and and it's like positive good energy. And I can't lie, I'm not the Good energy. I'm not the guy who's, I'm not a very spiritually sensitive guy. I'm trying to be, but I'm just like not naturally wired like that for some reason. Like one thing that, one gift that I think I do have is I can tell when you're in a positive place. I can't tell you when you're in an okay place or a bad place, but if it's a good place, I can you recognize tell it. you this is a good positive place. And Blind Frog hmm. Ranch is a good positive place. Interesting. <laughs> and when we went out to Skinwalker Ranch, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel bad, but... It didn't feel bad to me. It didn't feel like a good, positive place that I would want to build a house and spend my life. Blind Frog kind of is that way. I felt... <laughs> you know, interesting. it's interesting that you bring this up because I've never shared this, but, you know, it was my first time at Skinwalker Ranch, mm -hmm. and I was expecting it to be really spooky or crazy or strange or evil or something. Mm -hmm. And the overwhelming feeling that I had the whole time was excitement and curiosity. And I was just kind of really enjoying it. And it was just like, to, for me, it was like just this beautiful mystery. Yeah. That's, I think, what Even Brandon Fugel feels. He goes, anyway, yeah. What'd you say, sorry? 
Brandon Fugel always says he thinks it's like a Sherlock Holmes mystery, like the world's greatest mystery yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like. Yeah. I don't, when even when I feel like darkness which is usually just like my own fear or whatever mm-hmm. i'm intrigued by that because i'm <clears throat> i can know i realize that on my end i can't attribute malicious or um like malevolent uh um what are they called Beams. intentions i can't attribute malevolent intentions to someone else they may or may not be malevolent but i'm feeling the fear and i think it's interesting and i think that uh I don't know, man. Skinwalker Ranch didn't give me negative vibes, and that was the that was the thing that I thought that I would have. I thought I'd get creeped out, like at a haunted house. I thought I'd feel super creeped out. Yeah, I didn't feel that though. I didn't feel that either, but I didn't feel like this is a great positive place to be either. Really? Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed my time there, but there's something. So it's kind of neutral to you, well, but you realize like, you're not good at telling a bad place anyway. Basically. Yeah, I, I can't tell a bad place from a neutral place, but I can tell. A good, place. a good place when I'm there, and it didn't feel that way to me. Um, oh man, you heard of? You're supposed to not even be able to walk on that Skinwalker Ridge because there's so much radiation. Like even being there once is supposed to be like it's, dangerous. It's transient, though. According to the internet, it's transient. It's transient. Okay. It comes yeah, because well, I, I just wondered, like, if we got radiated. Yeah, it defies what science... I mean, usually you shouldn't be able to target radiation at an individual person transiently, but that's what happens, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. Well, the uh, going back to that's what I was weird. previously saying uh, about your the energy portals, like hmm. what Dwayne said is that he came up with somebody one evening, I think it was about dusk or something, um, and they, they came up into... Because at Blind Frog Ranch is kind of in this... It's like a big box canyon. It's kind of like this bowl-like basin, and uh, so you're when you're, when you're in the actual ranch area, it's like completely secluded. You can't see the big open plains out in front of you because there's a mountain. It kind of the stream that goes through there kind of winds a little bit, so it's really secluded. And they go in there, and they notice that the sky is like really purple, <laughs> like the sunset is setting, um, which what? is not that under the out of the ordinary but it's really purple and then they notice there's a purple mist all over in this basin area <laughs> and and Dwayne was like mist. looking around he's like what's uh do you guys do you see that uh purple mist that's kind of weird the other guys that's even weirder and he like points up to the sky and there's three like flying saucers like hanging out over the property <laughs> and his theory was that this that Blind Frog Ranch is like a refueling port or something, like a natural oh, yeah. refueling place. Yeah. That's because a... of this energy portal, yeah. the UFOs would just go hang out there and get refueled. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, kind of on Skinwalker Ranch. Like, I was saying it's a <clears throat> the watering hole analogy, but I don't the, know. The natives, too, they also said um, at Phenomicon that there's, that they say the north side of Uinta Basin is good medicine. But the south side is bad medicine. Really? Interesting. And a lot of them won't even go to the south end, just out of superstition. So the south end is the low end, is the low desert land. So that's where all the white people have, uh, have desert, settled, kind of. It's lower. <laughs> the north end has no settlements, pretty much. I mean, nothing big. Yeah, Are you talking about the north end is like the foothills of the Uinta mountain range? Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. There's that. But for the most part, like the north end is just... The Wyoming side. It's just... It looks kind of like the south end, I think. But it does get higher in elevation towards the end <laughs> i've never seen moon lake guys i've never been to moon lake to this day oh it's beautiful and that's one of the hot spots in utah yeah yeah when me and you were out there i heard wood knocks we found structures it was cool i thought you said you never been there though but you said you were oh you were I out there with someone else uh oh yeah we okay the yeah gathering two yeah years ago. it's all burnt right now but yeah they had a but forest fire the structures that the fire came through they even like, found some marbles that were like arranged yeah. in this yeah but that that fire came in like two weeks before we were there and there was already big structures built out of burnt logs when we got there it could have been there before though i'm some not of, sure well some of it wasn't because those fires were brand new so uh, let me i want to talk about fairies uh-oh. We'll talk about fairies. <laughs> um, what's his name? Daryl. Daryl. Why don't we we'll do this? Daryl tried to talk about to that to force people, and like 
then Mark forest left. Forest people meaning Sasquatch. Forest people meaning like U.S. Forest Service. Sorry, U.S. Forest Service. Okay. And then Mark left. He <laughs> like he knew that was going to go over like a lead balloon, so he like left Daryl to talk to them about theories. <laughs> well, pretty. here's the thing. So here's the only. So I know that there is a subculture of people who believe in fairies. Okay, that's like a, it's that's more like, in New Zealand. They have all sorts of they're around things here, about too. that. Yeah, they're around here. Really. And so, British so, Isles too. So uh, this is something that I laughed at a lot, but um, more and more and more people, like in the spiritual, like New Age community, are I'm realizing are like really seriously in the fairies, and so that was interesting to me. And then <clears throat> I love learning about near death experiences. Every time a new podcast drops on new, near death experience, I'll listen so I can get all of the near death experience testimonials. So this one guy had a, he got thrown out of his car, like through his windshield or whatever in the redwoods. So he's going through, uh, those beautiful windy roads in California going through the redwoods. And part of his near death experience was going through the tunnel of light and the whole thing, uh, having a life review and all that stuff. But when he was coming back to his body, he said there were many fairies that kind of helped him back into his body like small little people fairies that were living in the trees but they said he said it's kind of like well i basically the idea is that it was like spirits uh, kind of like a behind the veil type stuff Mm -hmm. so interesting and then that reminds me of like psychedelic that reminds me of like trips like dmt trips ayahuasca where people see specific entities over and over machine elves or like like Mm -hmm. uh people in a different in a different layer of consciousness there are like the same types of creatures that people see right so right. mantis literally there is like an a mantis alien that people keep describing correct yep, yep, it's that. really tall what a weird thing but people talk about these almost like um like psychic intel- creatures. intelligent Benevolent mantis creature, I remember <laughs> somebody told. Benevolent, really? So I, I remember Benevolent. a story somebody told about that. I've yeah. heard some pretty bad mantis stories. I've heard okay. bad ones and good ones. Yeah. But what matters is that they're all true no matter what. Yeah, that's because true. Because they're true. <laughs> okay, let's go. There's a guy who does uh, <laughs> of the original ghost tour of Provo. Uh, his name is, in fact, he was in the Utah, um, Sask- Utah Bigfoot Society. Yeah. His name is, oh, I can't remember, Danny something. But anyway, he, he talks about fairies as well. He does like a midnight tour of a certain area in Provo that used to be an Indian, um, you know, kind of settling ground. And he's actually, I guess, seen fairies and he'll like take people on a midnight fairy tour. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. He, I want to go on a midnight fairy tour. He's a pretty cool guy. I mean, he's a little bit. You That's know. the name of my <laughs> band. Midnight Fairy. That's the name of our band, Midnight Fairy. Tour. That'd be a hilarious it's, name I don't know for a band. Want that attached to my name. This should totally be a podcast. We just this is like the the paranormal Seinfeld podcast. We can still us walking around the woods with with a microphone talking about crap. Wouldn't that be a great podcast? Yeah, yeah. Nobody does that. That make it more interesting than some I've seen. I mean, like like my own. <laughs> Anyway. No script. We're walking around for eight hours a day. That's how long the podcast is. Unedited. <laughs> unfiltered. George Costanza and <laughs> what who's the guy with the fluffy hair is like Kramer. Yeah, Kramer. That's the thing is like long form long form is actually a popular form. It is. I I discovered that myself with my YouTube channel. And Joe Rogan discovered that, right? Like he's the one that made the big kind of breakthrough like that people really did enjoy four hour sessions or four hour discussions. I like those. It's ones. something you can flip on while you're doing something else. I mean, you don't necessarily have to watch it. I mean, yeah. Joe Rogan has four hour shows. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, shows that are longer. Yeah, shows that are like. It's like Hi. Rush Limbaugh or radio or something. <laughs> I'm not a, listen, I'm not a fan. Now here's for the controversy. So now, now you really want to, he, he brought the Mormon, Mormonism. I brought the fairies. Uh-oh. And now I'm going to bring the controversy. I do like 
I do appreciate Jordan Peterson because he's he's a uh, shining a light on something. <laughs> he's he's good at he's good at discussing and visualizing and de and describing good like imagery for like a discussion. So he's a Canadian psychiatrist too. He's championing young men who are just, you know, dysfunctional, supposedly, in society. Right. right. He's, he's become like a champion of kind of conservative Saying young men. Nobody's watching out for them, and he's, he's kind of fills it. Anyway. And, that's, <clears throat> and, I, and so a lot of the things that he discusses and things, I can see the, I, I feel like there's a lot of value in that in that space at least that he i don't actually agree with any of his we know where we're going right because i'm not watching yeah. the map okay yeah we're following our, our okay i'm just making sure because i don't have my map in front of me <laughs> but i will say this though i will say this about him i disagree with him on his point but i i agree with the um like the depth that we're talking about long form podcasts right so the, the depth and the types of discussions he has, like the top, the subject matter, I agree with that. And I and the and the tone and the length and the depth of the discussion that he has, I agree with that too. And I like that that is happening because I think a lot of people are using that to deconstruct a lot of their narratives. I mean, deconstruction is happening on both sides of the political spectrum, so everyone's deconstructing right now. So. I just think it's interesting. We, have we looked for salamanders in these ponds at all? Because mm. this is exactly... Not recently. Find, this is exactly where you find a giant tiger salamander. I love yeah, those things are slimy. <laughs> anyway, so like, long, long podcasts, long discussions, discussions with depth, yeah, if there's good on the right material the on it. Are popular right now. All if it's a good discussion. Yeah, I think it's a good discussion. People actually have something to say. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two. I'm so used to having children with me. I'm so used to. Oh, that's what you're doing. Having kids around me. Like, one, two, look for cars, let's go. <laughs> Don't fall over. Yeah. Rex, do you have socks on? You can make it. <laughs> Yeah, this the place we've been walking, I think, was an old road. And like that, that's my natural. This kind of looks like, have you ever heard of Carl the Crusher? He has like a, you know, when he visits Skinwalker Ranch and everything too, but he, okay. something dug out like this, he'll think it maybe a mine was here or something, you know, but this doesn't quite look like that, but, no, it's, but it's, weird it's verging it's on something that's been disturbed. It. What's that? It's a woodpecker. It's, it's weird that it's like this. Like, I don't know why. It just doesn't look like a mining spot. Yeah, not quite. If there were rock stacking, then I'd start thinking mining. If there were a tailing pile. <clears throat> I would like yeah. to see the correlation between tree height and Sasquatch sightings. That'd and be interesting. tree density and Sasquatch sightings. And also... Especially in Utah. Oh. And also old growth and Sasquatch sightings. I'm sure there's some old growth stats. Maybe some sort of weird... Super I tried to look for like old growth forests in Utah. And all I could find was there's a few isolated trees that are... You know, didn't get caught by the... Uh, you know, the old timers <clears throat> up on the cliffs and places. And Anyway. Trees just don't last very long in Utah. I mean... There's a few that are in the thousands in Utah, but most of them are like bristle cone pines. There's a few that are not, but right. I think there are a few. I'd have to research it again, but yeah, there's a few normal pines up, but they're up on the cliffs where nobody can get at them, and that's why I didn't cut them down, and the beetles didn't get them. Now there's no big force, is what I'm saying. So, yeah, there's many hunters around this place, Dan. Well, we just wrapped up uh, touring the site of Sasquatch Chronicles number 738. And it's actually not that squatchy by, you know, generally speaking, Utah standards. Um, but a lot of the Utahs are like that. It's such a vast region. I mean, there's kind of a paucity of, you know, structures and things like that going on 
So we're going to try to head out to another place. Um, another reason we're kind of cutting it a little short is because, you know, we notice there's hunters around. This is hunting season. We don't have the appropriate orange gear. So we're going to kind of uh, try to favor a wilderness area. Because I've noticed in the fall, autumn, you know, when hunters around, <clears throat> I'll hear Sasquatch in the evenings, dusk around hiking trails and places where there are not going to be hunters. So we think that they're pushed into those areas. They're you know, smart enough, you know, year after year where the hunters congregate. And uh, this is one of those areas, even though it'd be interesting to know what time of year, you know, the uh, Sasquatch Chronicles episode 738 took place. I'm not sure if they said in there. Uh, they did mention COVID in it. He said that a lot of people were up in the woods in Utah. <clears throat> There's kind of a phenomena where there are people everywhere because they were trying to get away from, you know, the only activity that they could do where, you know, we can have more than 10 people gathering or something just to go off in the woods. So maybe there's a chance that Sasquatch was pushed into this area because there's area, other areas that are more uh, popular for, you know, just uh, Sunday drive, a sort of Saturday hiking around. So maybe the, you know, that Sasquatch that he saw there is not here anymore. It just is an unusual thing that he, Sasquatch had been pushed into this area because of all the influx of people wandering around the, the mountains of the Uinta Range. Again, this is just all speculation, thinking, you know, Sherlock Holmes style, inferior Sherlock Holmes, but thinking what, what happened in this place, you know, it is, you know, looks pretty typical to the Uinta Mountains. Uh, <coughs> um, so, you know, Sasquatch should definitely be in here. We probably have to stay till dusk. Maybe we might hear something, but again, with all the hunters around, they probably vacated. So we are going to as well. I don't know, they wanted to walk down here for some reason. I guess they're doing something before we leave. I relieved myself in the woods, so I kind of behind here. Go ahead and cut this. It's probably too much information. Okay, so we picked the spot we like better as far as traditional squatchiness. Elevation's a little bit lower, but we're headed up, up, up. Still close to the Uintas. So I don't know if you can see it on the video, but Rio was pointing out, I need to get this in the right position. Anyway, you probably can't see it at all. Kind of in a area that has X and some things going on. But anyway, we'll keep hiking up here. Really weird. It's tricky when you start to get into it. I'll remember it when you tell me, I know. Like they're signaling a little bit. Lagger trees. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's, hey, let's do a... Uh, forgot the correct terminology. <laughs> correct. <laughs> or at least, you know, the as far as what you came up with. <laughs> Giving us a quiz there. Okay, let's go into these flag trees. I 
Yeah, those are definitely pointing. Yeah, now we're getting into some big, big pines. Is that black or is that just really dark gray? The thing up in the tree? Right here. I see a squirrel, it's really dark. Yeah, I see I see what you're looking at. These are great. Yeah, it's a real dark squirrel, he's just up there. Guys, these are great ones. These are yeah. wonderful. Yeah, we're getting into bigger trees. <laughs> yeah, look at the size of this tree right here. This is this is old enough to grow. Yeah. But I feel like the ecosystem is gonna eat gonna hit a really good equilibrium here because it's old. Yeah, yeah much much better. Yeah, Yeah, I might even see a wall in here in a minute. You wanna, yeah, this is like wall. Should we like there. split up and kind of like. You go kind of this way. We'll go like three across so we can hear. You wanna go straight? Okay, somebody just, needs to go over there. Yeah, let's just kind of rove up this way. I'll start over here. If you find something worth. Well, this tree is ancient right here. Yeah, we all head off this way. Okay, I'm gonna head up this way. Just really quickly. So this thing right here, uh, Nathan, not Rio, but the other Nathan was explaining to me that it's a parasite, I think it's called mistletoe, that changes the DNA and causes this malformed uh, growth. And sometimes you'll see these up in the middle, high up in a tree, very often. And I've at least, maybe once or twice had people you know, do a still frame in a video and you know, ask me, is that a Sasquatch up in the tree? It's not, it's just those things. So anyway, just uh, giving you a close up shot of some of those. So we got a lot of uh, stuff thrown around here. Look, this is still even green on the ground. And then we got, see the cross up here, all these which are ways, but uh, Pretty interesting, is it natural or has it been arranged some? You know what? The only thing that I can see here that looks really interesting huh. is like this uh, situation right here. And if you look at the situation here, look at the thing up on top. Oh, the uh, kind of things see strung little, together? Like weird, like pyramid looking thing? Yep, I see. In fact, let me get closer. But it's like the rest is random. So this kind of strung up here. Yep, that's that whole thing. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting because it stands I out if you know what you're looking for. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because it's huh. different directions. Yeah, that's interesting. Did it all get crunched that way? Probably not. I mean. Possible. So. Yeah, this is... This, this could be a bear. This could be a bear wall. Oh. What? Did you hear that? 
It was like a whoa. It was just a crash. Just something. Just a deer or something. Huh. Just a crash. Over there. There's a tree. Nice tree break right there. Yeah. What's up, Nate? There's some stuff. There's a bunch of stuff back over here too. This Do you want what? Whole area is interesting. Is it worth us going over there? <laughs> should we go? Should we come over? Yeah, this is an interesting forest for sure. Hey, look at this. There's like a little X up here. <laughs> so this is kind of weird. It seems kind of has a pattern there. X. <clears throat> Even got a little trident. Actually, it's not a trident, but it's a thing with a little Y in it. Yeah. Nate, they sent up the label. Yeah, you gotta hide from the raven. <laughs> come on, come on. I would think of the raven as like the, the the drone trying to figure out where we are. I, yeah, I've had that several experiences. Yeah, where they're like they're like the sentinels or something. Well, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly do hide from them. It's like they'll circle and circle until they find you. Looks like a deer or something bedded down in there. Yep. Right in here. Let it down. This is all interesting. Yep. I'm kind of feeling like over there is going to be something. So let's go over there. Hey Nate, we're going this way. So we split up for now. We're just sweeping the place three across. I'm taking kind of the middle route. Rio's on the right, Nathan's on the left. Um, this isn't that particularly squatchy, just kind of a little bit more typical pine forest. I think I might go to the edge here closer to the, you can see where it opens up and hopefully into aspens over there in all the yellow leaves. Yeah, this isn't as squatchy, but I'm gonna get up through here and I'll flip this back on. So we definitely have some leans in the trees up here um, where Nathan's at. Kind of wallow like. Oh, yeah, more stuff up here. Yeah, so this is more like it. Oh, yeah, it's like a homage tree. Oh, yeah, this is totally, I would say it's high probability to range. So we got. East over here, this one coming down here, and this stuck in here, and all the stuff going on over here. Orleans, yeah, it's interesting. It's tough to know how much is the range, but. I mean, it looks arranged. Some of it, you know, when you have pine trees that are replacing aspen force, you'll get dead trees like this, but then the trick is to know, is it arranged or did it just fall that way? So, 
anyway, somewhat typical forest, this part of it. At least there are bigger trees still around here. Fairly uh, steep. Head on back on down. They've kind of converged over here. This kind of wall-like area I filmed earlier. Ouch. Yeah, it looks kind of impressive on this side. All that stuff over there. I think I'll take a photo here. Yeah, I'm about to. So here's another angle of the same thing. It looks uh, almost squatchy from this angle. All right, keep on going here. Kind of a interesting spot to hang out. But. Yeah, it's definitely pretty violently broken by something. It's kind of a almost a print. On the edge of this. It's kind of covered over by bark. Oh, who knows? So we're kind of headed up this draw. Generally speaking. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I don't know if you can see it. Here. Hold on, let me see if I get this to show. Okay, so here, okay, like that. Here. Yeah. So there's a nice little game trail it goes all the way up here. So here we go. Oops. Mylar stickers. Collectible. Sasquatch collectibles. That side's a little bit more thin. 
This draw is looking up, it's really super clogged up with debris, but we're headed this way. We're trying to find some thicker force again. Yeah, I saw a huge one low when I filmed it, giving the description you told me because I've never heard that before. A lot of people know it's not a Sasquatch up in the tree. Honestly. It can be helpful sometimes, especially for video quality. <laughs> Make it more interesting video wise. Madsen? Yeah, John Madsen. <laughs> he probably couldn't Hello? make it in this train. <laughs> but anyway, you, it's good he has yeah. technology. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess I should get one too. I just afraid like there's a learning curve at the beginning and people like have them drop out of the sky and the thing can't save itself and yeah. you flush your money down the drain. I got one of those. It was like 200 bucks like maybe five or six years ago. It's so hard to fly. Yeah. I crash it and break it all the time. That's what I'm afraid of. This doesn't work anymore. It crashes too many times. You didn't pass the learning curve. <laughs> Uh, probably some of the bigger ones are, I'm hoping, easier. Yeah, it didn't have any, like, machine controls or anything to keep it from bumping into anything. It was just up to No me. safety stuff. Yeah. So let's, I guess, let's, uh, let's just keep going down the hill. Yeah. Until we see. I want, I want to get to the center. Oh, there's a bone. You see, there's a vertebra oh, yeah. and some other stuff just strewn about. Bones. Just not a whole skeleton, just some random pieces. Yeah, it looks kind of weird. Definitely a lot of hoof traffic through here. Oh, is that the one up Mill Creek? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mark took me to that. Like after Mill after you already seen it. It's so steep at the top, it's like, we, you know. 
crazy. Yeah, it's like a Halloween one. Probably should go in October. <laughs> Before they close that canyon down. Yep. Yeah, when there was all wet with snow and everything. It's one of those super obvious structures that was just. Boy, something really dug it in there. Bear, maybe? Yeah, maybe it's so huge and deep. Mm -hmm. Seems like I'm just videoing here. Some people say that's a bear bag. I don't really understand what a bear bag is. Not too bad, compared to some places, especially in the Uintas. This is like more like the Wasatch almost. There's a nice wispy ice cloud up there. We've been <clears throat> kind of remarking those all day long. Which means it's pretty cold up there. Well, it's a little bit squatchy in here. We're just kind of <clears throat> taking a break. But I uh, kind of found this in here. It's just off of a kind of a trail that's going over. Some things going on in here. deer track right there. Maybe an elk. <laughs> Looks like something about a down over here. Anyway. So I uh, did a wood knock and I got a response. We thought it was real, but he claims it wasn't him. So I'm gonna try it again here and see if we get a response. It's kind of windy now, so we'll see how, how it goes. Well, this time it chose not to respond. <laughs> yeah. So that thing stabilized, that camera stabilizes? It's pretty good, it has a gimbal, yeah. Know, really it's not so, too bad, it's like so 300 something screen? bucks. Do you see I have a screen? Yeah, right here. Here, I'll show it to you, let me... It just feels like... Okay. So, yeah, a uh, carcass, it's um, just the torso, no head, no legs. There's still blood on the bones, it's stripped. There's some squatchy terrain around here. And uh, yeah, I thought we should film that. What place is this? Oh, La Plata. Yeah, it's by, isn't it by, um, I can't remember the name, uh, La Plata has a wonderful Sasquatch activity in some places, and they've had the discovery of 
made the made the leases, the leases or whatever. People who were living there, leasing the land, made them all sign a thing that they wouldn't that it was like part of the HOA affair or whatever. But they wouldn't bring is it counties or something? No, it's just it's all non it's all non permanent structure, aka old people with lots of money and big campers. So the old people would go up there and sit there camping in the woods. Is that is that balloon? Oh yeah. Oh, you know how to trail the whole thing? I didn't know it was right here. I was down there. There's a wallow. Not too far away. My alarm balloon right there. I don't know if you can see it. And it's blue too. Yeah. Yep. I know. It's like obnoxious. Always thing. blue. Remember how I always talked about. My it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Like Dude, blue. the blue mylar balloons was honestly that was a weird phenomenon because yeah. no one had ever talked about that, as far as I know. Yeah, and I yeah. started talking about it. Do you know about something? Oh, huh? Yeah, I know all about that. Though. Do you know about? Did you ever hear blue mylar balloons before Utah Sasquatch? Nope. No. <laughs> because I started talking about that, and then that became like an actual huge phenomenon. That was so. Then weird. people started noticing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, did it happen before I talked about it, or did it happen because I talked about it? And it started to become like a consciousness freaking thing. I don't even know. <laughs> it's like weird. If you if you uh, ever start to talk about timelines. And consciousness and timelines and like mm -hmm. the multiverse, things get very, very interesting when it comes to um, cause effect relationships starts flipping. Like it's it's very weird. It's very weird. So right down here, we have this tree. It's fresh, but it's broken off. And maybe you can see there. Broken off. And it's the treetop. It's it's the very top of a tree. It's been ripped off. Uh, not sure how that would happen, but just noting it there. So here we go down some kind of rough terrain here. Bigfoot marathon that, like, remember how we walked along that path? Yeah. In the woods? Dude, that was so cool. Yeah, was Mandy that one? Too. Yeah. I missed that one. I miss, I miss Mandy. Yeah, me too. The good spot. Over there. This is the also, you know what, guys? This is also good. This is the places that I like to camp. I like to camp. These, like right in the middle of there in a wall. In the dark, in these dark spots in the in the woods. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the whole pillow. Right here. Read pocket. What is, yeah, okay. That's the, these would be the cheeks coming around. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, but this is. So, right in the middle of the wall, we got a skull, <laughs> a potential wall. Most Which like makes it more skull. more potential. <laughs> yeah, Sasquatch goal. But even small skits, even small skits are in there. Yeah. That is so weird. Like, why would you... That is so beautiful. Right? So 
total. And there's a mile of balloon remains right over here. Maybe I'll film in a minute. Boom, genuine Utah Sasquatch video. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, and if you want to count this, five. Yeah, that's interesting. And then six, that one over there. And all this stuff over here. That didn't, did that come off there? Is that like attached? Oh, it is attached. So that was broken like that. This looks like it's pretty violently split. That one as well. Far be 